Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Anubha Rohatki and with me is Ramya with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to embark on a two-day visit to Uzbekistan to attend SCO summit tomorrow. India and France agree to work towards establishment of Indo-Pacific Trilateral Development Cooperation. Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh conveys India's concern to US Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin over America's decision to provide sustenance package for Pakistan's F-16 fleet. New Delhi slams Islamabad for abusing platform of United Nations Human Rights Council for malicious propaganda against India. President Draupadi Murmu to attend state funeral of Queen Elizabeth II in London. Tomorrow is the last date of filing nominations for Padma Awards. Cabinet approves signing of guarantees for hosting FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup 2022 in India. In Durant Cup football, Mumbai City FC enters final after beating Mohammedan Sporting 1-0 in Kolkata. And in women's cricket, India to play the third and final T20 match against England at Bristol tomorrow. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be on a two-day visit to Samarkand in Uzbekistan from tomorrow to attend the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the SCO Summit. Mr. Modi is visiting the country at the invitation of Uzbekistan President Shafkat Mirziyoyev. The Ministry of External Affairs said that at the summit, leaders are expected to review the grouping's activities over the past two decades and discuss the prospects of multilateral cooperation. Our correspondent reports that the summit will be attended by leaders of SCO member states, observer states, Secretary General of the SCO, Executive Director of the SCO Regional Anti-Terrorist Structure, President of Turkmenistan and other guests. The 22nd meeting of the Council of Heads of State of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization will discuss topical issues of regional and global importance. This will be the first in-person summit after the COVID pandemic hit the world. The last summit was held in June 2019 in Bishkek in Kyrgyzstan. Chinese President Xi Jinping, Russian President Vladimir Putin, Pakistan Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif and Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi are among the invited leaders. Prime Minister Modi is also likely to hold bilateral meetings on the sidelines of the summit. The SCO is an intergovernmental organization founded in Shanghai in June 2001. It currently comprises eight member states, China, India, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, Pakistan, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. Suparna Saikya, AIR News, Delhi. The New Services Division of All India Radio will broadcast a special discussion program, India and Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit 2022, tonight from 9.30 p.m. onwards on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies. The participants are Ashok Sajjanhar, former diplomat, Anshuman Mishra, Prasar Bharti Special Correspondent in Beijing, and Simran Sodhi, journalist. Stay tuned to the FM Gold Channel to listen to the discussion. This program will also be available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jashankar today said India and France have agreed to work towards the establishment of Indo-Pacific Trilateral Development Cooperation, addressing a joint press conference after holding talks with his French counterpart, Catherine Colonna in New Delhi. The minister said Indo-Pacific Trilateral Development Cooperation would facilitate development projects, especially in the framework of the International Solar Alliance. He said the Indo-Pacific Trilateral would also provide a platform for Indian innovations and startups to demonstrate their relevance to the requirements of other societies. He also said International Solar Alliance now has formed projects in Bhutan, Papua New Guinea and Senegal which show the impact that India and France make together around the world. Dr. Jaishankar said France is a key member of the European Union and they have discussed the advancing India-EU negotiations on trade, investment and geographical indicators. He welcomed the commencement of the first round of negotiations in this regard. India and France have a long tradition, a strong tradition of working together in multilateral platforms and on global issues. Currently, we serve together in the UN Security Council and our coordination there has been commendable. I would particularly appreciate the clear-cut position France has taken on the challenge of terrorism. I shared with Minister Colonna India's views and expectations of our forthcoming G20 presidency. Addressing the media, the French Foreign Minister said, 
Her nation has mobilized itself and will continue to do so for India to get permanent membership of the UN Security Council. Ms. Kalona reached India yesterday on a three-day official visit. She will travel to Mumbai tomorrow where she will meet industry leaders. French Minister for Europe and Foreign Affairs Catherine Kalona, who is on a three-day official visit to India, called on Prime Minister Narendra Modi today. Besides discussing on bilateral and other issues of mutual interest, the minister conveyed President Macron's message of friendship and cooperation to the Prime Minister. Mr. Modi fondly recalled his recent meetings with President Macron in Paris and Schloss Elmau, Germany, and conveyed his desire to welcome the President to India at an early opportunity. Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh had a productive telephonic conversation with the U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin today. They discussed the growing convergence of strategic interests and enhanced defense and security cooperation. Both ministers also discussed ways to strengthen technological and industrial collaboration and explore cooperation in emerging and critical technologies. In a series of tweets, Mr. Singh said he conveyed India's concern at the recent U.S. decision to provide a sustenance package for Pakistan's F-16 fleet. The Raksha Mantri said he is looking forward to continuing dialogue with Secretary Austin to further consolidate the India-U.S. partnership. Labor and Employment Minister Bhupendra Yadav has said that the COVID crisis has brought to the fore the need for India to focus on improving the employment conditions of the workers for a strong and resilient recovery. At the G20 Labor and Employment Ministers meeting in Bali, Indonesia, the minister discussed the initiatives being undertaken for building a stronger ecosystem for in nurturing India's startups. New Delhi today slammed Islamabad for abusing the platform of the United Nations Human Rights Council for peddling malicious propaganda against India, exercising India's right of reply in response to the statement delivered by Pakistan, First Secretary in Permanent Mission of India to UN in Geneva, Pavan Badhe, rejected the statements terming them baseless. He said such a statement does not deserve any response. Mr. Badhe said, considering that Pakistan's top leadership in the past openly acknowledged creating terrorist groups and training them to fight in Afghanistan and Indian UT of Jammu and Kashmir, Pakistan's audacity as a self-styled torchbearer for human rights of the people of India is appalling. India urged the Council and its mechanisms to call upon Pakistan to take credible steps to end its state-sponsored terrorism and dismantle the terrorist infrastructure in the, ter in the ter territories under its control. Mr. Badi said, Pakistan has an abysmal record in the promotion and protection of human rights of its people and it has one of the worst records in ensuring the right to freedom of religion or belief for its minorities. President Draupadi Murmu will visit London from 17th to 19th of September to attend the state funeral of Queen Elizabeth II and offer condolences on behalf of the Government of India. Queen Elizabeth II, the former Head of State of the United Kingdom and Head of the Commonwealth of Nations, passed away on the 8th of this month. India also observed a day of national mourning on the 11th of September. Union Home and Cooperation Minister Amit Shah said the production of grain-based ethanol will not only reduce the import dependency but also increase farmers' income. The minister said India is aiming to achieve the target of 20% ethanol blending in petrol by 2025. Addressing the gathering after laying the foundation stone for Kripko's bioethanol project in Hazira, Surat today, Mr. Shah said the plant will offer a big market to maize growing producers or farmers of the state. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman today said that training will be imparted to the employees of the GST department to teach them how to use technology to detect revenue leakages. Addressing the gathering after inaugurating the GST Parisar, a newly built residential complex for the employees of the GST in Kargar, Navi Mumbai, she said that this training will focus on better utilization of artificial intelligence, data deep dive and Internet of Things to use technology to detect where revenue leakages are happening. Minister of State for Personal Pension and Public Grievances, Dr. Jitendra Singh, today launched Swachta Portal for the special campaign 2.0. The campaign, which is to begin on the 2nd of October, is dedicated to Swachta and reducing dependency of work in government offices. On the occasion, Dr. Singh said the scope and mandate of Special Campaign 2.0 from 2nd October to 31st October 2022 has been expanded and all regional offices have been included in the campaign apart from all ministries, departments and attached offices. 
Union Minister for Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, MSME, Narayan Rane, today chaired the 18th meeting of the National Board of MSME in New Delhi. Presiding over the meeting, Mr. Narayan Rane highlighted the contribution of the MSME sector to GDP, exports and employment. He stressed on the need to address the issue of delayed payments to micro and small enterprises. On the occasion, the minister inaugurated the portal for the scheme for the promotion of MSMEs in the northeastern region, NER and Sikkim. He also launched the integration of Udayam and National Career Service, NCS portals, which was announced in Budget 2022. The BJP today hit out at the Aam Aadmi Party-led government in Punjab over its new mining policy, which has been stayed by the Punjab and Haryana High Court, as the Indian Army has objected to the policy. Welcoming the order of the High Court, BJP spokesperson Gaurav Patia told reporters in New Delhi that the new policy poses a threat to, the, to national security. Referring to the Army's stand in the court, Mr. Bhatia said that the mining policy would have adversely affected the structural integrity and strength of bunkers in border states, in border districts of the state. So a question will have to be posed and it has to be responsibly answered by Arvind Kejriwal and the Chief Minister of Punjab. Why is it that you are overlooking the issue of national security for your ulterior motive? Why are you formulating a policy which prima facie is not in national interest and also not in the interest of the people of Punjab, especially the farmers of Punjab? And this new mining policy has been stayed by the Punjab and Haryana High Court. You are listening to the Evening News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to embark on a two-day visit to Uzbekistan to attend SCO Summit tomorrow. India and France agree to work towards establishment of Indo-Pacific Trilateral Development Cooperation. Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh conveys India's concern to U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin over America's decision to provide sustenance package for Pakistan's F-16 fleet. New Delhi slams Islamabad for abusing platform of United Nations Human Rights Council for malicious propaganda against India. President Draupadi Murmu to attend state funeral of Queen Elizabeth II in London. Tomorrow is the last date of filing nominations for Padma Awards. Cabinet approves signing of guarantees for hosting FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup 2022 in India. In Durand Cup football, Mumbai City FC enters final after beating Mohammedan Sporting 1-0 in Kolkata. And in women's cricket, India to play third and final T20 match against England at Bristol tomorrow. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Apne business ko badhane ke liye, lijiye Akashwani ka sahiyog aur dijiye usse bulandiyo ke punk. Aapka business local hai ya rastriye? आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे-बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों पर विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो North East Diary program broadcast every Thursday and Sunday at 5.30 p.m. brings very interesting and enchanting stories from the eight Indian states of North East India. North East Diary this week, which is the 15th of September 2022, brings an exclusive interview with Dr. Chandrani Ghosh, District Program Officer, Department of Social Welfare and Social Education in the Government of Tripura. Looking forward to see you there. Welcome back to the Evening News. Hindi Divas is being celebrated across the country today. It was on this day in 1949 that the Constituent Assembly adopted Hindi, written in the Devanagari script, as the official language of the country. Today, Hindi is one of the most widely spoken languages in the world and the first language of more than 520 million people. Inaugurating the second All India Raj Bhasha Sammelan in Surat today, Home Minister Amit Shah said local languages and Hindi are the life of India's cultural flow. He added, the official language and local languages will together uproot the inferiority complex of languages created by the British. 
Mr. Shah said language is a medium of expression, but not a benchmark to measure one's capability. He stressed the need to strengthen languages to be self-reliant in every field of life. Mr. Shah said with the growth of Hindi, all other regional languages will also grow. Mr. Shah also said the government is stressing the use of the native language in all fields of education and planning to introduce Hindi and other Indian languages in various fields including courts and in technology. महात्मा गांधी ने राजभाषा के लिए कहा था राजभाषा हिंदी के बिना ये राष्ट्र घूंगा है हिंदी ही राष्ट्र को बोलता कर सकता बहुत बड़ा वाक्य है हमारी स्वभाषाओं के गौरव को महात्मा गांधी ने एक ही व्याख्या से पूरे विश्व के सामने रखने का काम किया है और मैं आज कहता हूं हिंदी हमारे मन की भाषा है हिंदी हमारे राष्ट्र प्रेम की भाषा है और हिंदी आम हिंद के जन की भाषा है हमें इसको आगे बढ़ाना है The Prime Minister has greeted people on the occasion. In a tweet, Mr. Modi extended his greetings to all those who have contributed tirelessly to making Hindi prosperous and empowered. In a message, Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Thakur said, as a result of the efforts of the Prime Minister, Hindi has made a different identity on the world stage today. Prasar Bharti Chief Executive Officer Mayank Agarwal today inaugurated the month-long Hindi Divas celebration at Prasar Bharti Secretariat in New Delhi. Over the past 75 years since independence, India's largest public service broadcaster, All India Radio, has been the proverbial storyteller for the 1.3 billion citizens across the country. All India Radio is celebrating 75 years of freedom with a series, Azad Bharat Ki Baat, Akash Mani Ke Saath. It showcases the journey of India since independence in various walks of life through the storytelling of All India Radio. In today's episode, we will bring you the story of industrial development in India. At the time of independence, the Indian economy was underdeveloped with agriculture contributing to more than 60% of the GDP and most of the country's export earnings. But after 75 years of independence, India has emerged as one of the leading economic powers. Systematic industrial planning and a different five-year plans helped in establishing a large number of heavy and medium industries. Industrial development in the country can be divided into two phases. The government successively increased its control over different economic sectors during the first phase 1947 to 1980. In the second phase 1980 to 97, measures were taken to liberalize the economy between 1980 and 1992. After 1992, the whole process of liberalization became more focused. Great businessman J.R.D. Tata is revered as the first architect of India's industrial revolution and the father of Indian aviation. He founded various enterprises that are now part of the Tata Group. He has played an important role in the development of independent India. I think that uh, from a technological point of view, management point of view, Indian industry, at least big industry today, is a very different animal to what it was when I first became a director of Tata's. There is a, a quality consciousness that didn't exist in the old days. We mustn't forget that it's not so long ago, perhaps a hundred years ago, when nobody would touch a Japanese product. Now they are the leaders, perhaps in most products, largely on the basis of quality. So, first of all, there is a big change. Then labor. What are we talking about with the dominance of the union, backed by the politician? There is no opportunity to exploit labor. The iron and steel industry made rapid progress after independence. Three new integrated steel plants were established at Raurkela, Bilai and Durgapur. Bokaro steel plant was established under public sector in 1964. Vishakapatnam and Salem plants were set up afterwards. Steel sector in India has traversed a fascinating journey from a mere 1 million ton at the time of independence to 120 million tons in the financial year 2021-22. Engineering, cement, chemical and fertilizer industries are also important mineral-based industries which witness rapid progress after independence. Textiles, sugar, paper and vegetable oil industry are parts of the agro-based industries which provide employment opportunities to a large number of people. In order to make India a global manufacturing hub, Narendra Modi government launched the Make in India campaign to facilitate investment, foster innovation, enhance skill development, protect intellectual property and build best in class manufacturing infrastructure. विकसित भारत के निर्माण के लिए देश के मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर का Make in India विस्तार करना बहुत जरूरी है। 
विकसित भारत के निर्माण के लिए जरूरी है हमारा एक्सपोर्ट बढ़े दुनिया में हमारे प्रोडक्ट कॉस्ट के मामले में कम्पिटिटिव हो ये सस्ते और सुगम लॉजिस्टिक्स के बिना संभव ही नहीं है इसी सोच के साथ पिछले आठ वर्षों से देश के इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पर अभूतपूर्व काम हो रहा है इंडिजिनस केपेबिलिटीज हैव बिन डिवेलप्ड टू अचीव सेल्फ सफिशियंसी एंड सेल्फ रिलायंस इट इज ड्यू टू दीज एफर्ट्स दैट टुडे इंडिया एक्सपोर्ट्स अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल गुड्स टू वेरियस कंट्रीज आजाद भारत की बात आकाशवाणी के साथ कैन बी एक्सेस्ड ऑन एट द रेट ए आई आर न्यूज अलर्ट्स ऑन ट्विटर न्यूज ऑन ए आई आर ऑफिशियल यूट्यूब चैनल न्यूज ऑन ए आई आर एप फेसबुक एंड इंस्टाग्राम हैंडल्स सो ट्यून इन टू ऑल इंडिया रेडियो न्यूज फॉर आजाद भारत की बात आकाशवाणी के साथ द कैबिनेट टूडे अप्रूव्ड इंक्लूजन ऑफ सम कास्ट ऑफ छत्तीसगढ़ हिमाचल प्रदेश तमिलनाडु कर्नाटका एंड उत्तर प्रदेश इन द लिस्ट ऑफ शेड्यूल ट्राइब्स Briefing media in New Delhi, Tribal Affairs Minister Arjun Munda said it was a long pending demand of these castes which has now been fulfilled. He said the move will help them avail of welfare benefits. Today, in the meeting of the Mantri Mandal, the Janajatiya Vishayon ke baare mein faisle liye gaye, jo kaafi dhinon se vivhinn rajyon ke maamle barso barso tak pending raha aur wo is tarah ke subhidhaon se banchit rahe. छत्तीसगढ़ में कुल अधिसूचित बयालीस जनजातियां इस समय है और उसमें से 11 में प्रायः बाची शब्द के रूप में जोड़े गए हैं इसी तरीके से हिमाचल में हट्टी समुदाय सिरमौर जिले के अंदर ट्रांसग्री क्षेत्र में एरिया स्पेसिफिक रहने वाले एक लाख साठ हजार लोग अब इस सूची में शामिल होंगे इसी तरीके से तमिलनाडु में पूरे हिल्स में रहने वाले एक ट्राइबल जिसकी सूची में नाम नहीं थी नारी कोरबन और कुरूबीकरण इसके बारे में भी मंत्रिपरिषद ने स्वीकृति दी है द कैबिनेट टू डे अप्रूव द साइनिंग ऑफ गारंटीज फॉर होस्टिंग फीफा अंडर 17 वुमेन्स फुटबॉल वर्ल्ड कप ब्रीफिंग मीडिया इन न्यू डेली इन्फॉर्मेशन एंड ब्रॉडकास्टिंग मिनिस्टर अनुराग सिंह ठाकुर सेड इंडिया विल होस्ट द इवेंट फ्रॉम द इलेवंथ टू द थर्टियथ ऑफ अक्टूबर द मैचेज विल बी प्लेड इन नवी मुंबई गोवा एंड भुवनेश्वर ही एडेड दट टीम्स फ्रॉम सिक्सटीन कंट्रीज विल पार्टिसिपेट इन द इवेंट मिस्टर ठाकुर सेड इन टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन इंडिया हैड होस्टेड द फीफा अंडर सेवेंटीन मेन्स फुटबॉल वर्ल्ड कप बाई होस्टिंग दिस वुमेन्स वर्ल्ड कप इट विल गिव एस एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू spread the message especially among the girl child among the women and also to promote the football across the country i'm sure it's going to be a great success as in the past the under 17 men's football world cup was a great success we'll try and give our best there is a new team of the all india football federation now they'll be hosting it and i'm sure it's going to be a great success the bangladesh women's football team scored a historic 3-0 victory over india in the saf women's championship in kathmandu to reserve their berth in the semi finals bangladesh will play against bhutan on the 16th of september while five time defending champion india will take on the host nepal on the same day in durand cup football mumbai city fc has entered final after defeating mohammedan sporting 1-0 at the vivekananda yuva bharati krinangan in kolkata For Mumbai City FC, Bipin Singh scored a solitary decider goal in the dying minutes of the game to seal the victory for his side. In women's cricket, India will play the third and final T20 match against England at Bristol tomorrow. Last night at County Ground, Dapi, India defeated England by eight wickets in the second T20 to level the three-match series one all. In Gujarat, at least seven labourers were killed after the lift of an under-construction building collapsed in Ahmedabad today morning. One person who is severely injured in the mishap has been taken to the nearby hospital. The Ahmedabad mayor has ordered a probe into the collapse. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has expressed condolences to those who have lost their family members in this mishap. In Bihar, seven police personnel were suspended for lapse in duty after two gunmen went on a rampage in the Begusarai district. One person was killed and 10 people were injured after four unidentified bike-borne assailants fled, crossing six police stations after opening fire indiscriminately yesterday. Talking to AIR, SP Yogendra Kumar said the criminals could not be caught due to the negligence of the police patrolling team. Chief Minister Nitish Kumar has instructed the Director General of Police SK Singhu to nab the criminals as soon as possible. 
Meanwhile, seven districts, including Begusarai, Patna, Samastipur and Munger, have been put on alert and a search operation is on to nab the criminals. The BJP today criticized Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar over the law and order situation in the state. Union Minister and Begusarai MP Giriraj Singh today met the family members of the deceased. Mr. Singh also met the injured persons who are undergoing treatment in hospitals. Condemning the incident, the Union Minister said Chief Minister Nitish Kumar should make a statement on the mass shooting incident. ये आश्चर्य होता है अगर ये जनता का राज है तो जंगल राज किसे कहते हैं अगर क्या आपको डर लग रहा है कि जंगल राज कहेंगे तो तेजस्वी जी आपको गद्दी से उतार देंगे आपने 17 साल राज किया है आप नैतिकता दिखाएं और अपने सामने आकर के अपराधियों पर नकेल कसे जो स्थिति हो गया है बिहार में गुंडा राज जंगल राज जो शब्द का प्रयोग करें Tomorrow is the last date for nominations for Padma Awards 2023. The online nominations or recommendations for the Padma Awards 2023 to be announced on the eve of Republic Day 2023 were opened on 1st of May this year. The nominations or recommendations for Padma Awards will be received online only on the Rashtriya Puraskar portal www.awards.gov.in. Details in this regard are also available under the heading Awards and Medals. on the website of the ministry of home affairs www.mha.gov.in and the padma awards portal www.padmaawards.gov.in the sensex and the nifty today witnessed modest losses both stock indices fell in sync with losses in the global share markets a report from the business desk Sensex declined by 224 points to finish at 60347. Nifty also plunged by 66 points to end at 18004. In the foreign exchange market, the rupee weakened by 29 paise against the US dollar to close at 79 rupees and 44 paise against the American unit. Global crude oil prices fell around half a percent in intraday trade. Brent crude was trading at $92.80 per barrel. Arjun Chaudhary for AIR News. And now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. National capital Delhi will have generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. The minimum temperature will be 25 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be around 30 degrees. Mumbai will have a generally cloudy sky with heavy rain. The minimum temperature will be 24 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 29 degrees. Kolkata will have generally cloudy sky with a few spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature will be 25 degrees and the maximum will be around 30 degrees. Chennai will have a partly cloudy sky with possibility of moderate rain or thunderstorm. The minimum temperature will be 26 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 36 degrees. Jammu will have partly cloudy sky. The minimum temperature will be 24 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 32 degrees. Srinagar and Muzaffarabad will have a mainly clear sky. The minimum temperature in Srinagar will be around 14 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 30 degrees. Leh will have partly cloudy sky. The minimum temperature will be 7 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 22 degrees. Gilgit will have partly cloudy sky. The temperature will hover between 15 degrees Celsius and 32 degrees Celsius. Hyderabad and Bengaluru will have generally cloudy sky with light rain. Tiruvannamthapuram will have partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm. In the northeast, Guwahati, Shillong, Gangtok, Agartala, Itanagar, Imphal, Aizol and Kohima will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers, while Gangtok will have a generally cloudy sky with heavy rain. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to embark on a two-day visit to Uzbekistan to attend SEO summit tomorrow. India and France agreed to work towards establishment of Indo-Pacific trilateral development cooperation. Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh conveys India's concerns to US Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin over America's decision to provide sustenance package for Pakistan's F-16 fleet. New Delhi slams Islamabad for abusing platform of United Nations Human Rights Council for malicious propaganda against India. President Draupadi Murmu to attend state funeral of Queen Elizabeth II in London. Tomorrow is the last date of filing nominations for the Padma Awards. Cabinet approves signing of guarantees for hosting FIFA under 17 Women's World Cup 2022 in India. In Durand Cup football, Mumbai City FC enters final after defeating Mohammedan Sporting 1-0 in Kolkata. And in women's cricket, India to play third and final T20 match against England at Bristol tomorrow. 
For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in and news on AIR app. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.